Okay, uh, welcome to the lecture series, uh, which is a part of the Simon semester uh, about uh, knots, homology, and physics. And uh, our speaker today and tomorrow, there will be a continuation, is Ramadevi from the Inst Indian Institute of Technology in Bombay. And she will tell us about Jern Simon's field theory invariants, not links, and three manifolds. Okay, so, so towards the end of this set of lectures, I would at least give you a flavor of how to compute these invariants, especially. Uh, workshop which we had last week was on knots, knots homology and so on. So I'm sure I will spend some time defining what is knot, what is link and and why this problem is a very important problem. Okay. So in mathematics, You can have a simple knot, if we call it as an unknot, then you can also have <coughs> a simple link. Let me use two different colors so that you can see the difference. You can have a Link. Okay. So this is what we call it as a Hopf link. Okay, in the knots, you can further draw. You know, I'm not really very good at it, but I will try. So it is, you can see, there's one, two, and three crossings. This is what we call it as a trefoil. And so on, okay? So, as this is only one color, which means it's only single curve, which is all these diagrams which I'm drawing here, are projections onto the plane, which means they are not trivial in three dimension. And when I project it onto the plane, some of the crossings will be over crossing, some of them will be under crossings. So 3D, these figures are non trivial only in three dimension. Okay? Three dimensions are very important. Is that okay? If you go to four dimensions, you can actually <coughs> remove them, right? You can remove these crossings if you have one extra dimension. For example, if you are saying that I am going to be on a two dimensional board only, then this curve and this curve, if I say that I am the ant on the board, this curve and this curve are distinct. But if I say I'm in three dimension, I can use the third dimension to pull it out and make it equal. Okay. So these are different in two dimension, but you can make them equivalent in three dimensions. Okay. These two are equal. So this is what you can call it as a read bus to move. Move one. The read bus to move one is where anywhere in any region. Okay, so I can have some non-trivial entanglement happening here and I can have a additional thing, some region you pull it out, if this is equivalent to, so I'm going to confine myself to three dimension, 
not to two dimensions and whatever I am going to draw on two dimension will be a projection with over crossing and under crossing to take care that I am in three dimension. And here if I add an additional twist, right, I can always remove this additional twist. Okay, this twist can be done either as over crossing or you know under crossing, both are, both can be done. <coughs> But you can see that this is equivalent to this in three dimension. Okay. So, whenever we want to say, give a, you know, uh, you know that in two dimensions, suppose I give you a, if I give you some kind of an orange, surface of an orange, or if I give you a donut, in two dimension. So let me call this as technical term in mathematics, we call it as two sphere, the two dimensional surface. Our globe is a two dimensional sphere, and this one is like a donut or a torus, which is technically called as T2. Suppose I want to say that these two are different. You know it is different. There's a hole inside. We call it a genus, but you need to give a quantity, a mathematical quantity, which will tell me that a mathematical quantity for S2 and a mathematical quantity for T2 are very different. And you know what that mathematical quantity is? It is what we call it as an Euler characteristic, right? Euler characteristic. is denoted by chi is denoted as 2 minus 2g right? and that quantity distinguishes all the 2d surfaces you can have many more 2d surfaces that you can take a circle with many more genus you know you can have objects like this and this S2, you can also show that any polygon you can kind of push or pull. As long as you don't cut and paste, you can make them topologically equal. Okay, so the topology of S2 is different from T2. And these are sometimes called as a genus C, G, a Riemann surface, denoted as sigma G. Okay, so these 2D surfaces can be distinct. By the simple quantity. Similarly, I want to find a quantity here which can distinguish. These two should be same, right? If I draw this diagram and ask you to count the quantity, someone gives you this diagram, we know that these two are equivalent. We want that quantity to be same, okay? So let me say that V of some quantity, I don't know what this is. I want this to be equal to V of this. Then you can say that it is a uh, not invariant. Okay. So this is not the only Readmaster move. This is not the only move. You have many more moves. Let me, that has been systematized in the mathematics literature. This is one move. You have Readmaster move 2 where you can, you know, in any particular region, you could have uh, others are all untouched. If you have in any region, if something where, you know, you can see that this is same as So you can do this where it may look as if there are, if for example in this or not, if I taken this as half link, instead of this if both were, you know, under crossing, this is not half link, right? 
This is same as unlink. So you have to see that if you can do <coughs> that, you must move to, you can actually get the same invariant. So if you write the invariant for this, it should be same as the invariant for this quantity. Giving you an example, but instead of here, you could put some non-trivial entangled region, you could put a non-trivial entangled region, right? And then you will see that the non-trivial entangled region and non-trivial entangled regions are here. And the invariant should respect this move. And this is called read master move two. R2. And the last one, the last move, which is called the read master move three, you can have a Suppose in some region of your knot, we focus on this, you can slide this below. Okay? So you can slide this below. So this is read master move 3. Okay? A couple of important things which I want you to know in read master move 1 which I've taken it in this example, you see an additional twist. Okay? In Readmaster move 2, there is no additional twist. If you count here, you have to also try and see what is the right. And to do the right, you have to give some signs. I'll come back to it. And you can show that there is no additional crossings in going from one to the other including here, okay. So there are two types of, two types of knot invariants. One is called ambient isotopy. Invariants. So this one, the invariant should be said that if you take a not k, it should be same as k prime. Where k prime is related to k by r1, r2 and r3. So all the three moves are allowed and whatever quantity you are going to fix, that quantity should be the same if you do the read master move 1, if you do the read master move 2 or read master move 3. Is that clear? There is another class of invariants which are called regular isotopy invariant. Okay, so let me call it by some other uh, symbol. Let me call it as P of K to be equal to P of K prime where K prime is related to K by only read master move 2 and read master move So, examples of these in the mathematics literature are your uh, Jones polynomial. We'll, we'll do the Jones polynomial also, but let me just give you, here the example will be a bracket polynomial. So what I am trying to insist here is that if I work out regular isotopy invariant, 
for this if i work out the regular isotopy invariant for this it will not be the same as regular isotopy invariant for this because these two are related by read master who one okay and you may ask why are we insisting on this regular isotopy invariants the regular isotopy invariants are sometimes referred to as framed not invariants i am confining to knots but you can do it for general links also a frame not invariance and these frame knots play a crucial role in getting new tree manifold okay so there is a procedure so let me explain that procedure what are the simple three manifolds just like i wrote the two manifolds here the simple three manifolds will be s2 cross s1 you can have t2 cross s1 okay so the way you can say is you have a sphere you take a line and identify that line after some point so you can draw it like a circle at every point so that is s2 cross s1 T two process one. There's also situations where you can take an R three and identify all the points at infinity. If you did it for R two, what will you get? You get the S two, right? So the same thing you can do here with identifying all the points at infinity, and that you can call it as S three. This is the three sphere. formally s2 you can give an algebraic equation right you can write x2 as embedding in three dimension with this condition right where this is the radius of the three sphere if i want to write s3 then you will have okay this is There's also other ways in which people can write this as writing x plus i y as z one and z plus i omega as z two, and you can write mod z one squared plus mod z two squared to be equal to r squared. Okay. So why did I bring this complex coordinate? Now we can start seeing other kinds of three manifolds. Let's say. S three mod Z P. These are sometimes denoted as length space L P comma one. So they will also the coordinates on this three dimension <coughs> can also be given by the same equation. In addition, you will have an equivalence relation. Z one, Z two. There was no equivalent relation for it. Your S three here. Can you see the board here below? S one, S three. So you will have Z one, Z two to be related by a root of unity. Okay, where omega is a root of unity, P a root of unity. So these are called length spaces. There are also more uh, variants of these length spaces, and those length spaces so those length spaces are called lp comma q and they are given by the same equation but z1 z2 is identified as
where P and Q are coplanar. Okay. Okay, I'm just listing a few. Here you could add sigma g cross s1 also. So I'm just listing you a few three manifolds. The reason is that all the knots are non-trivial in three dimensions. And using these knots, you could construct, you can try to take the knots in S3. S3 is closest to R3, no equivalence relation, nothing. It looks locally like a flat three dimensions. Of course, you have to remember at infinity you have to identify all the points. So here you can do all the computations of knot invariants. We will go through those details. Once we have that, there is a procedure which is called surgery. I'm not a doctor, but the procedure is called surgery where you take a knot inside S3 and then we'll go through that you can do a tubular neighborhood of. So you basically take, let's take this to be denoting S3. Okay. Let's take the simplest knot, which is the unknot, which I started with. And then you thicken the knot. Basically, you take a tubular neighborhood means just thicken it into forming a kind of a tube around the around the snot okay pull it out pull it out of this three manifold how, how will it look you will have an object with the hole here okay so let me try and keep it like a hole here you will have one more which is that thickened piece, right? You have taken the thickened knot, which is also the knot will be here, okay? You have thickened it and taken a tubular. Both of them have the torus boundary, okay? So this is like a cycle tube with the air included, which means it's three dimensions, and the boundary is going to be a two-dimensional torus. Okay. On the two-dimensional torus, you have two non-trivial cycles, right? By cycles, what I mean is that if suppose I'm on only on the surface of this two torus, I can have a cycle which is called as a meridian and this the along this knot which I had, I can also take one more cycle on the surface of the two torus. That is what we'll call it as a longitude. Okay. And there'll be a similar thing here. Right. So now I want to do some kind of a mapping between the meridian and longitude to the meridian and longitude here. Suppose I do a my, uh, mapping where I try and take a map. Let's say a map where I try to relate the meridian of, let me call this as a unknot complement. Sometimes this is denoted by S3 by a knot. These are notations which you will see in many books. So now take the knot complement. It also has the torus boundary, oppositely oriented torus boundary to this. If you just fit it back with this map, which is an identity map, you will get back S3, right? S3 with this unknot. If I don't put it as an identity map, suppose I take the meridian to longitude, longitude to meridian. Okay, so such maps you can do. If you do that, what 
you will end up getting when you glue back after putting this map. Suppose this takes from meridian to longitude. Okay. Vice versa. If I do that. What I will get after I use this map and I glue it back, I will end up getting a, a new 3 manifold. Let me not tell you what that new 3 manifold is. Okay. It's not very easy to, for me to visualize, but in some cases you can actually visualize them and show that it be a new 3 manifold. And I will list for you this is what is the licorice ballast theory. So, licorice ballast theorem says. Surgery of knots, I'm going to take it to be frame knots, okay. Frame knots in the sense that only read master move 2 and 3. If you had replaced this unknot by putting an unknot with an extra crossing, the licorice ballast theorem says, Surgery by taking a cubular neighborhood and doing a map. Okay, the same map let's take. You will get a different 3 manifold. Unlike your ambient isotopy invariance, ambient isotopy will not distinguish this and this. But the surgery is going to be on frame knots, which is going to distinguish whether you do a surgery on an unknot or the surgery with some extra twist, sometimes we call it as a framing one, okay. So this is denoted as unknot with plus one, if it is, you know, over crossing, if you make it under crossing, you can call that to be minus one. So if you do it on this, you will get a different three manifold, okay. So let me list what I am trying to say before I get to... So, licorice ballast theorem So I'm writing not technically, there are many things, small, small things I have not really mentioned here. It should be oriented and so on. So I'll come back to it. But at least pictorially you should get a feel that when you do a surgery on this and if you do a surgery on an unknot or if you do a surgery on an unknot with a self twist, which I call it as unknot with framing plus one or minus one, you will end up getting a different 3 manifold. But if I write the not invariant and I claim it to be ambient isotopy invariant the way Jones polynomial is written, there for this is not for surgery, the not polynomials, if you want to compare with the mathematician's work, we work with this case, which means the ambient isotopy invariant for an unknot or unknot with additional twists will be the same. Is this clear? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the way I'm used to surgery being defined, right, is that uh, I have some number with it, mm. and here it, it seems like, um, well, you say specifically that meridian goes to longitude, right? Yeah. So uh, this is one special longitude. Huh? Which longitude? Yeah. So I said this is the map between uh, the link complement. T3, I should say, right? The unknot, the tubular neighborhood of 
This is the unmod which I took, the tubular neighborhood of it. This has longitude and meridian. This also has a longitude and meridian because yeah, but, uh, How do you define longitude? Uh, where? On the boundary. Uh, but so how do you define longitude? Because, uh, I mean, you could define it as a curve, right, that um, yeah. kind of is a generator of the homology yeah, yeah. of that thing. Yes. But there are so, so if you make it as a solid torus, one yeah. of them will be contractible cycle. That is the meridian. Yeah. Other one, longitude is non-contractible. Yes, but there are several of those. Uh, so if you take a longitude and you add a meridian. Yeah, so those equivalence relations, you have to keep track of it. Yeah, I agree. Yes. So which longitudes are you Okay, looking? I'm just taking a simplest one, the conventional one, which looks like the convenient one. I have a trefoil. Yeah, so let, let me explain that also. If you had a trefoil, okay, so what I will do is, I will take F, so always I'm going to do a transformation which is going to take me, so let's, let's draw the trefoil. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's take that this is S3 mod trefoil and I have this with the, this knot which you're going to have would have gone three times along the meridian, right? Mm -hmm. And then it would have completed. Because trefoil, can be seen as a torus knot. Yeah. Then you can wrap it on the meridian price yeah. and close it along the longitude. But it goes twice, right? Huh? Doesn't it go twice around the longitude? Yeah, so you, you complete it by closing it, right? When you go through this, and you have to get back here, right? You take the thread. But it goes twice, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you take that. And I'm going to, this still has a toral boundary, right? Yeah. It has a meridian and a longitude. Once I've drawn this on the boundary, I have a meridian and a longitude because it's a torus knot which is drawn on the torus with a fixed meridian and a boundary. Yeah, what is the confusion? Maybe I'm missing something. Um. But, like, it's not exactly unique um, what, what a um, longitude is. So, uh, because you're trying to see it as an SL2Z transformation. I understand what you're saying. On the boundary, when you have a torus, yeah. if you had something like this, this is equivalent to taking something like this. That's what you're trying to say, right? The tau and one. Yes. Yeah. So this, this is what you are, these two are equivalent. Yeah. That's, that's what you are trying to say. Sort of, I think so. Yes. Yeah. So I am trying to not do that. I am trying to take a tubular neighborhood. Once I take the tubular neighborhood, I am not worried too much. I am trying to take that there is a specific meridian and a specific but longitude. You kind of need to be worried. At some point, yes. But then I am trying to, I am trying to do a way of seeing how the mathematician's theorem can be implemented in an algebraic expression. This is what I'm trying to do, okay? And there, when I try to do the F transformation, for me, it is like the uh, tau going to minus one over tau, according to me. This is the transformation I'm doing. For you, you would say that this is like, it's the same, uh, you know, it's the same class in which it belongs. To. Is, is that what is confusing you? I mean, so if I draw a trefoil, like the knot diagram of a trefoil. Yeah. So I'm just trying to tell you that I I'm not several yeah. curves. Huh? I can make several push different push offs of it. Yeah, but topologically they are all, you know, you're, I'm looking at a topological invariant also, right? You're doing a lot of push ups. It's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in taking a trefoil, take the thicken the tubular neighborhood and take it out and I'm trying to say that there should be a map with a non-trivial map. So this is a very simple map I gave you but every two boundary you will have on a torus will have a meridian and a longitude. Right? But the longitude needs to be specified. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm not really specifying it 
but if i take this and i put a map i know how to relate my knots in s3 to a three manifold this is all i'm claiming okay. and these results have been validated with the three manifold okay so yeah okay B besides that argument what i'm trying to say is i am interested in taking knots in s3 okay and i would like to write summation over so the knots will have some kind of an identity which i want to put it as some kind of a transformation and from here i should get some new three manifold okay this is all i am doing fine we'll keep, we can talk maybe after so this is the this is what is my algebraic way of relating relating different three manifolds invariance for different three manifolds using the not invariance in in the theory and the not invariance have to be frame not invariance which means it has to only respect read master mode 2 and 3 is this clear at least algebraically i would like to validate what the theorem says and i'm not really too much getting on to these equivalence we'll come back to it of course there is some i completely agree that it all depends on the uh, uh that it changes if yes. you do a randomized one yeah. the question is just like i don't know what that manifold is supposed to be <laughs> Yeah, so that is something which I also have been, you know, I I wonder how they can visualize various things. But for me, if they are able to visualize, I would like to give an algebraic expression. Just like the Euler characteristic, which can distinguish a torus from S two, I can give an algebraic expression which can distinguish, let's say S two cross S one from S three or the length space L P comma one S. Okay, fine. Okay, so this are the so this is why I'm saying that knowing knot invariance is very important because these knot invariance play a role through this Likorish Valles theorem to help me to write invariance for three manifolds. Okay, since she asked this question, I also want to say that just like Riemannster moves, it is not this is not unique. there can be a not k and a k prime which are related by kirby moves okay one or two okay so if you take a not k and add an unknot with an additional twist if you do a surgery on this unlinked piece it is going to give me the same three manifold as if you did it with k okay so in other words this with some transformation which i'm going to put in here it should be exactly same as sorry i should use the framed invariance not the it should be the framed invariance okay and not the so this should be same as the same thing which i do here okay. this is a claim that kirby move 1 and 2 so this is kirby move 2 this is kirby move 2 so let me write the kirby move 2 and the kirby move 1 okay. so kirby move 2 is as i said some not k and you add an additional twist is equivalent to the not k if we move one if you had some additional twists here okay this will be same as drawing a half link with the opposite twist is my memory okay mm. this should be the opposite twist so the same not k you should have with an additional thing which is entangled so this will become you know, uh, not will become a two component link 
and if you have a twist you can undo it by this if you did not have this you will have to add an additional twist so this too whether you do this one the summation over f times so this f i'm formally writing as a homeomorphism on the boundary but let's not worry about what this is if you take p of this k okay so let me call this as some let me call this as some uh, lot this whole thing with this twist is what i'm calling it as k and then this one let me call it as some <coughs> h tilde so p of k tilde this should be same as okay so these are very important so this f will also change to something else but let me not worry too much okay but you need to write an expression and the summation will depend on the number of components so there will be so many summations so there will be two summations here similarly here there will be two summations and this side will be one summation so you you need to find what is this quantity which respects kirby move 1 and kirby move 2 then you can claim this object as a three man it has to respect both okay then it is a good three manifold so this is what is important that you need to find in terms of frame not invariance or frame link invariance an algebraic expression what that algebraic expression which what is this algebraic expression is dictated by that the invariant should not change and the kid be move one or kid be move two if it happens then it's a good three manifold okay. so this is what is Incidentally, there is no well-known classifications of three-manifold. Okay, two-manifold, S two, T two, as I said, Euler characteristic completely classifies two manifolds. But if you take S three, S two cross S one, and I don't know what this M is, but I can generate from various knots. Okay. so huge three manifolds it's not clear it's not clear whether z of m i find and i find z of m prime this is done from surgery of a knot or a link this is done by surgery of another knot or a link which is not related by kirby move one or two okay if they turn out to be same it's just an algebraic accident exactly like you are not polynomials which i wrote the ambient isotopy invariant there could be a not k and there could be a not k prime let me call it a some other not where k tilde and k are not related by Could be move sorry, read master move one, two, or three. But the polynomial is same. Then it is again an algebraic axiom. This also tells you then it is not a good invariant. If it is a good invariant, what is the requirement? If k and k tilde are not related by read master move one, two, and three, strictly it should be not equal to. most of the cases it is not equal to sometimes some of them are equal okay that means what such an invariant does not completely classify the tower of knots tower of inequal and knots if i want to classify i need an invariant which is going to be different for different Knots which are not related by read master move one and two and three, 
ambient isotopy. Okay. That has not happened so far. At least the Jones homefly, Kaufman, they do find there are not K and K tilde. There are cases where K and K tilde are going to be same. Okay, so this is why it is an open question. If these two are not going to be similarly in the ambient isotopy and regular isotopy also. So if you have those knots which are not related by Kirby moves, K and K tilde are not related by Kirby move 1, 2 and 3, I will get the same 3 manifold invariant which means 3 manifolds are also not completely classified. Is this clear? Right? So this is a problem which we all want to somehow solve. And that is where we are using the power of John Simon's field theory. And we would like to see whether we could solve first order question to first write the ambient isotopy. Of course, from ambient isotopy, I can write the regular isotopy invariant with some framing correction. Once I know these two, then the next one is to go and look for three manifold in. Yeah. Uh, in the K1, yeah. uh, is that supposed to be a hop flinking? Uh, because uh, if I take the right picture, I could do a, a Rydermeist uh, 2 move yeah. to separate them and then I use uh, K2 to delete uh, that thing. This one? Uh, so K1 below. This one? Yeah. yeah. On the right, is that supposed to be a hop flinking? Yeah. So if I take a hop flinking with this okay. and if I remove this out. Because you have to uh, yeah, you have to undo opposite. this with the opposite things. This is what is the kid must This diagram is not correct. What? It's uh, two over this. It should be linked. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that what you pointed out? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I didn't even realize I'm very It should be entangled. Okay? Yeah. So I think uh, this is a, let me just uh, say what I have said now and then we can continue in the afternoon lecture after. So I have tried to give you So I tried to give you a flavor of uh, a knot and then a link and then I also <coughs> said about ambient isotopy invariance for a knot, also said a regular isotopy invariant for a knot, whatever I am saying can be also included for the link, okay. So. So this one will respect read master move 1, 2 and 3. So the always the uh, if not k and k prime are related by read master move 1, 2 and 3, the constructed invariant will be equal. Converse is not true. Okay. Converse in a sense, if you had a not k and k prime which are not related by read master move 1, 2 and 3, that could be accidental symmetries. And here it should be respecting only read master move 2 and 3. And they play a role in the construction of okay. so these three manifold invariants are written in terms of
writing sometimes not in variance, but you should know that some can be not, some can be links. Okay. And the question is V of K equal to V of K tilde. not related by okay and similarly z of m m of t from k and m tilde from k tilde where k and k tilde <coughs> are not related by Kirby move 1 or 2 ok and or so this is all I am trying to say that the problem of classification of knots is still a question mark. Hence classification of three manifolds is also a question. Let me stop here. Is that fine? It's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we will continue with the uh, constructions of invariants in the next lecture. Thank yeah. you. If, um, do you have some more questions before the last break? Okay, so we'll continue. <laughs>